Hey, this is Daniel Norton. I'm here in my studio in New York City with Emily. And today, uh, we're gonna shoot some kind of simple beauty shots. And what I wanted to do was, I have a daylight studio, as you guys probably see, and actually we can see the lights going up and down, so this is perfect. Um, one of the problems is you're in a daylight studio, the light's changing all day long, right? Also, I can't really control the direction, right? The lights, the windows are always over here, but the light's moving across the sky. And if I know I wanna do something, um, but I wanna use the daylight, Sometimes I end up you know, having to either compromise or whatever, or I can just add my own lights. And sometimes I'll use flash to do that. Today I have, um, from Felix though, some LED lights. Uh, they're really small, simple lights. I use them a lot for my video production and stuff like that. But as it turns out, they're the same size as the Profoto stuff, we realized. So you can actually stick uh, some Profoto accessories on there. So I thought I'd throw my beauty dish on there. This is a silver beauty dish, or, or the white beauty dish actually, in this case. And we're gonna just put this on and give ourselves a nice even light across Emily's face. I did put black cards on either side. There's a couple of reasons for that. One is I want to prevent the light coming from the window hitting her. I want control of my light. It's a beauty shot, I want to keep the light in the center. And two, it will probably act possibly as a little bit of a negative fill too to kind of give me some more narrowness to the light. So it can't hurt. Um, so here we go, it's up on a C-stand, really simple. I'm going to, these lights of course can be dimmed and they can be color temperature adjusted, etc. I'm just keeping it on uh, 5,000, uh, 5,500 Kelvin actually. And I'm going to uh, leave it at full power because I want as much power as possible. And I'm using the Canon 1DX uh, with Mark II with the 85mm uh, 1.2. I'm going to shoot this at 1.2. I want to get that really kind of airy feel. Um, so I'm just going to use the meter and the camera to start with. Uh, I am set up here. I'm really got taller. I'm just using like the, the standard kind of uh, center weighted metering. And I'm going to adjust it until it gives me an exposure in the center. We'll take a shot. I'm tethered into capture one. Okay, so it's a bit dark, right? I'm not surprised. Meters in the camera, just like everything, I say this all the time, you know, meter is, is only going to give you a baseline is where to start. You want to uh, use your, uh, your own judgment as a photographer how to light stuff. Obviously, this is a white background. It's bright behind her. If I put it on spot metering, it might have been a little more accurate, but um, you know, the skin tone's not bad, but it's certainly underexposed. So I'm going to go in and give myself a bit more exposure. If you were using one of the automatic modes, you could put in like exposure compensation at this point, but I'm just gonna stay like this. All right, that looks a bit better, right? Now I'm at, yep, now I'm at uh, 1.2 at 1160. I'm on a tripod, so that's not gonna be a problem. She's not gonna be moving that much. Background's a bit of a grayish color. If I want it to be white, I'm gonna have to wait for the light to come through the window. We're gonna play around a little bit though. Um, I'm not super concerned with that. It does give kind of a, uh, a decent shape to her face, but I think I want to fill in a bit with the reflector, so we'll do that as well. I have a reflector here. So Emily's just gonna hold that herself because she's good like that. And we'll just bring it in nice and close. And just extend your chin forward. There we go. Down but forward. There we go. Nice. Boom. Now we're getting bright. That might be almost too much. Yeah, that looks pretty nice actually. I don't want to lose detail on her skin. I'm getting a bit of a vignette, and I think that's actually the beauty dish in the shot. So, I'm gonna, I raise the camera, I gotta raise the light a bit. One of the things with doing this kind of lighting is you wanna keep the dish relatively low, because otherwise you start getting that overhead tabletop, which we don't necessarily want. Emily hurt her lip or something, so let's keep touching you. Um, so now we've got, okay, it's out of the shot. And there we go, nice and sharp, nice and smooth, good like that. I'll back up a smidge, I think. I want to be as close as possible because the closer you are, the more shallow you end up to field. And I want to really accentuate that 1.2 uh, crazy shallow up to field that we have with this. That looks pretty good. And we can shoot as long as there's light behind her. We're going to get a white background. If it gets uh, super bright, it'll start to flare back. If it gets a little bit darker, it'll turn gray so we can play around. But one thing I might want to do here is add uh, a little bit of like a, a light from the background. And I have a second, second light back there. Let me just shoot a couple like this first so we can compare it. So. Good. We're just working there. We get the reflector in there. Being very careful with the focus. Just know that when you're shooting at 1.2, you're going to definitely end up with some shots that are going to be a little soft. So make sure you overshoot it a little bit. Now, one thing I didn't do, but I can correct it if I want, is this is a digital target. You've probably seen me use it before. I'm going to hold it in there. She has to multitask here. Whenever you're doing your white balance, you want to make sure that all your lights are in place. So I have to keep the reflector there. You got to bring it up a little bit. No, up. You got to hold it in front of your face. There we go. Mm -hmm. Models never want to hide their faces. There we go. 
All right, I'll take that back. All right, that's a digital target. That's going to give me my color balance. So I'm going to grab my little thing over here. I'm going to hit it. That's neutralizing my color. I have capture one set on all other copy from last, which means that it's going to pick up my white balance and carry it forward. Now you might be saying, why would I do a custom white balance when I know I could set the color temperature on my light? Well, you know, the light is bouncing around in the space. It's going to change no matter how precise your lights are. If you're doing something that's color uh, sensitive like beauty, you want to make sure you do a custom white balance. So don't forget to do that. Even if you do it at the very end, it's fine. You can always go back and correct it as long as you're using uh, uh, raw files. All right, so let me set up the light in the back over here. So you can see it back there. It's on a stand. I already have it fitted with barn doors. I kind of have it more or less in position. And I'm just going to turn it on. This one is only set at about 10%. I just want to give a subtle little kind of kick. Again, with the white background, this is going to barely show up at all. Um, and I have this one, actually I'll set this one on 55 as well. There we go, so the same. I could obviously change it to a different color, uh, you know, color uh, balance rather, to make it cooler or warmer than the main light if I wanted to play around with that. But uh, I think I'll stick with this. Yeah, and that just gives me that little bit back there. We can see the difference here. Subtle, you know? One thing about hair lights is that, or one philosophy on hair lights anyways, is that they should barely be there. And you can see that it's just giving that little bit of, uh, of kick in there. And if you wanted more, obviously, you can give yourself some more hair light. So I let you do a few more like this. I, I have the color balance set. We'll make sure we have a good one. Push your neck forward slightly towards me. Get the reflector in there. Good, like that. Good. So we shoot a few. Push them down a bit. The one thing I'm being careful about is uh, not getting the, that. Actually, I'll do it so you guys can see. Turn your face more this way. Now let your chin up. Of course, now it won't be, it'll be hard to do, but there's places where that light's hitting her. Like it's hitting her in the nose right now, the, the backlight. So you want to be wary of that when you bring a hair light in. You see that? It's hitting her right there. So just be watching that. It's a little easier to do, actually, when you're using constant lights. So uh, that's another reason to use a constant light for this kind of thing. All right, we're chin up a little bit. Good. That's it. Last one. One more. Whenever you say last one, you always have to shoot at least three more. That's required by photography school. There we go. Nice. All right. Again, overshot a little bit because um, at 1.2, 1.2 is going to end up being, you know, uh, if she moves in a little bit, it's going to go out of focus. So I always just shoot a few extra than I think I need uh, just to be safe. Um, but we can see here that for the most part, we've stayed, you know, pretty sharp and it's nice and clean, feels very natural. And this would be useful too, even if you were in a space where there was like stuff back there, right? If I was in an environment, right? I'm using mostly the light in the space. I'm just giving her a nice light on her face. I could use smaller black cards, move them in closer if I was on location, so you don't have to have giant V-flats either to do this. Again, just two lights uh, by Felix, LEDs, daylight balance, nice and simple. So we're going to put Emily's information, social information, in the description so you can follow her. Uh, my, mine will be there as well. Make sure you follow me there uh, on YouTube and Facebook, etc. Uh, be sure to subscribe to Adorama TV, and I'll see you next time on set.